Welcome to Lisbon. I'm only This is one of the premier veterinarians, force of nature in Portugal, Dr. Elizabeth Capitão. Is that, I mean, I always am confused. Captain. Oh, Captain, yeah. my captain. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, like captain, that's right. Well, Elizabeth, uh, number one, thank you for having me here in Portugal. It's been a wonderful event. Um, this is the first Congress convention like this in Portugal, right? Yes. The, uh, here in Portugal, we don't have any business conferences in veterinary medicine. So in my uh, working days, I, I realized that um, in veterinary teams, we lack of competences of leadership and management and communication with clients and within uh, the teams. So um, instead of speaking myself to our colleagues, uh, I, I thought it was a dream uh, to bring here people that I know that have all the knowledge, all the experience are valid uh, in the class to teach us more about your experience, what are the best practices that uh, you are doing, doing all around the world. So this is a kind of a tool yeah. This, this um, conference is a tool for our colleagues here in Portugal because we have to put our business in another level of quality of service and uh, customer service. Right. What's the biggest challenge that veterinarians, veterinary nurses in Portugal are facing? What, what's the biggest thing you're trying to help them with? I think the main problem here is communication. Communication with clients. Uh, we are... Um, having lots of problems to um, put value on our work and we always excusing that client don't have the money, client don't want to do the procedures, but I think we are afraid to communicate and afraid to talk about money and I think it's the big problem. The, the other problem of communication is inside of our teams yeah. because sometimes we don't talk with each other. We don't have a purpose in our businesses, so we don't know where to go. So everyone is doing lots of things, are frustrating, tired, doing lots of work hours without a purpose. And I think leaders of these businesses have to... Um, First, stop, and I help them to stop, right. think about their business, find the purpose for the next years, and communicate that to their teams. You know, what's amazing, Elizabeth, listening to you talk is these are the same issues all around the world, you know? So, what does the normal day look like? When does it start? When does it end? Okay. Here we have mainly clinics, small clinics, with uh, two to four or five vets and uh, two or three persons to help. Some are nurses, some are, don't are nurses. And, and we have large hospitals with 20, 30 vets. It's uh, different realities. So normally clinics open at 9 and go to 8 p.m. Uh, um, hospitals are opening all, right. all the period. Do they take a lunch break? Do they close for the middle of the day? In clinics, yes. Some, some of them uh, close uh, to lunch, uh, mainly outside big cities. But in Lisbon and Porto, uh, Algarve, um, these uh, bigger clinics uh, have a, a full-time a full uh, offer. So 9 in the morning till maybe 8 at night. How many days a week are they open? Normally from Monday to Sunday. Some, Every day. Exactly, normal. Uh, smaller clinicals, clinics uh, stop in Sunday, but right. the smaller ones. And the smaller clinics, are they taking their own after hours emergency calls? Uh, um, um, 
the owners of the mm -hmm. practices normally have their phones all night ringing. Yes. Yeah. So it reminds me a lot of my practice, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yes, I, I often um, heard from uh, employees and owner of the business that they are, they are frustrated, tired. Uh, but I think they, they feel that way because they don't have a purpose. Yeah. They all, um, they are running around the practice that they, uh, they duplicate functions. They don't have protocols to do um, the things consistently. This young lady has a purpose. She is helping not only the, the veterinarians and veterinary staff in Portugal do better, live better, have healthier lives, but around the world. She is remarkable. I'll leave, leave all of her links uh, below here, but Elizabeth, congratulations. You. you did something, you did something amazing. You did something amazing, so rock on. We're done. with a very special friend and guest. Uh, this is Dr. Brian Faulkner, all the way from Ireland. Say Ireland. Ireland. Where, where in Ireland exactly? Well, I grew up in a town called Cookstown, which is right in the center of Northern Ireland. Uh, so right in the middle. Okay, so, so Northern Ireland, middle, I got that part. There's something yeah, else yeah. in there. <laughs> but the reason that uh, Brian and I are here again in Lisbon speaking at Revet, the first ever conference like this in Portugal, but there's something that he just completed that is quite amazing, inspirational to me on a personal level, but I wanted to share his story with you. Well, I completed 10 marathons in 10 days. Let me repeat that. 10 marathons in 10 days. Yeah. And that was about six weeks ago, so it was April, and we went all over the British Isles. So we started up right up at the most northerly point, and uh, that's John O'Groats, which is the most northerly tip of the British Isles. Ready to be in position for the 10th marathon was the London Marathon uh, 2017. So we had a big finale in the London Marathon. Why did you run over 260 miles in 10 days? Why? Well, why do we do any crazy thing? I mean, I'm not even a runner, okay? Honestly, I don't think of myself as a runner, and people kind of go, you, you are a runner now, Brian, you've gone and done, done 10 marathons, you have to be a runner, and I go, I don't think of myself as a runner. I had never run more than six miles two years ago. Are you serious? Honestly, never ran more than six miles. Wow. I did my first half marathon in March 2016. I did London Marathon in April 16 as my very first marathon, and then I shared with a colleague there was a little bit too much alcohol involved in our creativity and our innovation. You're Irish. And, and yeah, I know. And I said to her, I, I said, uh, I got this crazy idea. I, I, you know, a crazy idea. It's just to try and ramp it up for charity, to draw a lot of attraction to this charity, which is the Brook Animal Hospital. And we said, I said, I'm thinking of doing 10 marathons in 10 days. And I think it was the moment she said, I'm in. And I went, okay. So yeah. how much money did you raise to help these working animals? I mean, this is amazing yeah. in and yeah. of itself. And we raised... 20,000 pounds. The very first donation we had, one of my veterinary clients donated 100,000 pounds. Wow. 100,000 pounds. So that's, what's that, 130,000 euro, 130 ish thousand yeah. dollars US yeah. wow. in one donation, the very first donation, and it's astonishing. So that's so going to help a lot of, oh, a lot of families. Well, I've known this guy for a while. I can tell you he's the real deal. And the fact that he did this amazing feat uh, to raise so much money to help animals that really need it desperately and often aren't even talked about. We're not even, it's not even on our radar. Uh, it's just, uh, again, an inspirational story. I'll leave all the links below to check out what Brian did. Uh, He's a good friend, a colleague. We get to spend some time abroad. We're always meeting in amazing locations. So thanks again yeah. for everything you do, man. You're totally welcome. And thanks yeah. very much for your interest. And thank you. Yes. Go Ireland. <laughs>
and I am a regional manager for a corporation called VetCor. Um, I've been in the veterinary practice field for uh, about 28, 29 years now and uh, managing for a good portion of that. Uh, my territory and the hospitals I manage, I personally manage 19 hospitals at this wow. time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm glad you're impressed with that. <laughs> I mean, what, are, what are the big issues you see that vet teams face today? That uh, staff training and then the retention are the biggest things. And then what I find from the staff who are the people that we're trying to train right. and we're trying to retain is that on the retaining side, um, they feel underappreciated or undervalued for the work they do. And it's not just monetary, but yes, yes, um, monetary, you know, you do, you do hear that. And in the field, um, you know, the things that veterinary nurses do, um, I mean, some of them are qualified to be veterinarians. Um, if a veterinary manager or owner is watching this, what are some simple things they can do to show their staff they care? That's a great question. Uh, really, just FaceTime. FaceTime is, is huge. And some people don't want FaceTime. They might be a little intimidated when the boss wants to come to talk to them. But, you know, maybe they're intimidated because the only time you've been talking to them is to criticize them about their work or do a review. And people don't like that. There's anxiety around it. Oh, so, thank you again. Yes, thank you. Yes. And we're in Lisbon. Yes. Mwah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, no. <laughs> I never. Only.